Dr. Pereira, thank you so much for coming in to speak with me today about mental health um, for our new members' um, mental health portal. I know that you've agreed to support the launch of the, the portal, so thank you so much for coming in and speaking to me today. You are a psychiatrist and cognitive behavioural therapy specialist based in London, um, and you have over 33 years experience in psychiatry and you've also been in private practice in the City of London for the past 20 years um, and I know that you've featured widely in um, publications around the city and you've been quite high profile in this area. Um, for the benefit of our members who don't know who you are and what you do, can you give a brief overview of your experience in the Square Mile? Thank you Rebecca. Um, so yes, I'm a consultant psychiatrist. And for people who may not necessarily be aware of the differences between psychiatry and psychological therapy, so I'm a medically trained doctor, mm -hmm. having gone through the usual hospital medicine uh, route, and then after that trained in psychological medicine. And in my particular case, additionally, I trained in psychological therapies. I've been dealing with mental health issues since February 1986, which was my first house job as a uh, junior doctor in psychiatry. Uh, over a period of time, I would have conducted over about 80,000 consultations with individuals mm -hmm. uh, dealing with all aspects of mental well-being. Last year, CISI conducted a survey of those working in the financial services profession, um, and that survey revealed that only 46% of people actually said that they would feel confident speaking to their manager about a mental health issue, which was quite shocking for us, actually. Well, it's interesting you say that 46% uh, only would uh, speak about their mental health to a line manager. I'm actually quite shocked mm -hmm. that it is 46% yeah. and it's not 20% because the reality is that in days gone by, people would not necessarily talk about their mental health issues mm -hmm. at all. And the fact it is now 46%, I think, is an, uh, is an advance. Stigma, I think, is defini uh, definitely uh, and very gradually diminishing in mm -hmm. the uh, city. Uh, but it's going to take a very, very long time. Sure. Any uh, issue to do with the mind is seen as a sign of defectiveness mm -hmm. or weakness uh, by not only by the individual concern, uh, but by also the society in which one lives in, and also uh, by um, uh, employers. Mm -hmm. And especially when you come to highly achieving environments such as working in the city, then it uh, achieves an even greater and sharper focus. In your experience, how does mental health, um, particularly regarding staff working in financial services, usually manifest itself and what might be some of the more common physical symptoms that people might experience? Uh, for me, what is important when I sit in my consulting uh, room, if you like, or indeed when I am invited to lecture into large organisations, is to ask the question, um, as to how much of what one experiences is to do with uh, one's predispositions mm -hmm. and how much is environmental. So when I talk about predispositions, I really refer to um, one's personality and personality makeup. Being aware of one's genetics is very important because there are some families um, that would have a very strong history of depressive disorder, obsessive compulsive disorder, severe anxiety disorders, bipolar affective disorder. Uh, and various others. Mm -hmm. And why is that important? Because you then know in highly pressured environments, you might land up with a greater chance as compared to someone who does not have that genetic predisposition. So does this mean this is a death sentence? Certainly not. It just means that you're being smarter, you can act quicker. And in my experience, dealing with genetic disorders, the, the treatment outcomes are far better than people without uh, having some of these genetic, uh, genetic predispositions. And then you have the environmental cohort. And within the environment, you've got to ask the question, is this a toxic environment? And by toxic environment, I refer not only to a working toxic environment, but a toxic home environment. Mm -hmm. um, and within the home, there are various challenges. All of us are individuals with uh, relationships and friendships, and we are sons, daughters, husbands, wives, fathers. How much of that really affects your mental well-being, but we bring all of this into the workplace. So I haven't really answered your question about symptoms and signs, but what I'm saying is before one goes to symptoms and signs, um, uh, the various symptoms, if you like, and, uh, that can result is so individuals may land up with sleep difficulties, 
Individuals may not, uh, not have with anxiety disorders and suddenly you never had a problem doing presentations at work and now you're standing up in uh, front of a group of people and you feel your heart is be beating fast, you have palpitations, you have sweating, you have flushing of the face mm -hmm. and what you could do before you can't do uh, easily now. Um, uh, people may um, land up with uh, uh, drinking too much, various uh, substance addiction problems, cocaine is uh, more uh, uh, relatively more common as compared to uh, any of the uh, other uh, substances. People land up with relationship difficulties, people land up with sexual dysfunction. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, the symptoms can manifest in a whole uh, variety of ways. I think having a brutally honest, constructive, self-reflective exercise mm -hmm. is important. Before people part, uh, point fingers at others, they should take a step back and reflect about um, uh, uh, where it is that they're at. And sometimes talking to uh, a loved one, like your partner, um, or ch our children are brutally honest, and they will tell you, you know, as to um, uh, what uh, some of your shortcomings may be. Are there any particular sort of examples of best practice that you've seen within financial services organisations that could be rolled out a little bit more widely? Um, and is there any particular business that you feel has made good progress in improving an attitude and culture towards their staff's mental health? So um, there are quite a few employers in the city who I said before are well-intentioned, well-meaning, and they try and do what is good for, for, for their workforce. So some get it better uh, as compared to others. Mm -hmm. Organizations that have a culture of uh, bringing about, uh, say, staff and well-being surveys, where the information that is gathered is not tokenistic but meaningful, um, in asking about the temperature of the organization, line management within the organization, interpersonal relationships within, uh, within the organization, working practices within the organization, what works and does not work, and then acting on that data, I think, is the most powerful influence of change. And I don't think employers need to fear this. Employees would welcome such opportunities. And from there on, within each organization will come a whole raft of well-being initiatives that will lead to um, uh, workforces that are far more engaged. So that for me would be a good example. And a good organization uh, that we've worked with that have put their money where their mouth is, so to speak, is Lloyd's Banking Group, where they have uh, embedded the optimal leadership resilience program that we put forth at where the 200 of the senior leadership group have gone through the program. Now we are dealing with 2,000 of their managers on 500 managers per year over the next four years. And they are really taking the whole business of this neuroscience, cognitive behavior therapy based intervention in a very meaningful manner. And in October uh, of 2019, we are going to roll out the Helix program, which is an employee well-being resilience program to help the workforce. So that, in my view, is the best possible example that you could have in the city today of where people have addressed this issue in a very comprehensive manner. Certainly something to strive towards. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I'm conscious that some of our um, viewers watching this video may actually be dealing with some of the things that we've talked about today. Stress, anxiety, maybe lack of sleep, maybe you know having those two glasses of wine turned into three glasses of wine of an evening. Um, if people are watching this video, want to seek support or guidance, um, what would you recommend and how does one actually look after oneself? If, um, if people recognize um, that there is a particular issue or a problem, the first thing to do is to talk to someone um, who is a good friend or a partner about what it is that they might be experiencing and to have no shame or no embarrassment whatsoever in doing that. Secondly. Um, if they feel that there is a difficulty or an issue, depending on the culture of the organization, depending on your relationships within the team to a trusted team member or to a line manager. People feel anxious about talking to human resources or employee relations in a particular organization, but um, uh, if possible, that is also a useful way forward. Uh, many organizations have employee assistance programs where they can access help. But in my view, by the time you come to that stage, very often the horses have bolted the stable doors. So that's not necessarily preventative, but more of a reactive program. And then, of course, there are various uh, external resources that are available in terms of accessing therapy services, in terms of accessing uh, psychological assessment services in whichever country you live in. Certainly here in uh, uh, London, uh, there are an abundance of resources, so people can certainly uh, do that. 
but there are lots of uh, little things that people can do on a regular basis. Maintaining a good sleep routine, being mindful of the uh, amount of alcohol one drinks, being mindful of the circuit breakers one puts in place during the day. So for example, are you just going day, uh, hour in, hour out, 10 hours, 12 hours in? Would you not take uh, a few uh, minutes out once an hour just to get up from your desk and walk around the office or walk around the floor, go and get a glass of water? Myself, I, 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 I have uh, two or three minute mindfulness meditation exercises um, uh, uh, three times a day, mm -hmm. two or three minutes each. And then being mindful of what it is that you put in your mouth because gut health and the gut microbiome is very important in terms of the kind of nutrition that you put into your gut that ultimately goes and influences the neurotransmitters in the brain. There are lots of little simple things that people can do, including, say, for example, walking uh, for part of the distance into work um, and um, uh, having a physiological movement as well. Thank you very much. Those are very helpful tips. I really appreciate having had this conversation with you today. It's been illuminating. I hope that our members find it interesting as well. Thank you very much. Well, I hope so too. Thank you. Thank you.